Cruz from Desert Gateway Baptist Church. And this is another in the series of lectures that we're talking about Bible study, methods of Bible study. And uh, today I'd like to talk to you about the chapter summary Bible study. Now this method of Bible study examines the content of a chapter of the Bible by reading it through at least five times, asking a series of content questions and summarizing the central thoughts of the passage. This method enables you to begin to understand chapters of the Bible that are usually fairly short without going into a, a deep study. It's easy to learn. It doesn't take much time. It needs no outside helps or reference tools. And it's, a good, it's really good to use when you're engaged in a rapid reading survey through the Bible. Uh, before you begin making notes and uh, to get acquainted, read the entire chapter five times, at least five times. The more you read a chapter, the more it will come alive to you. Each time you reread the chapter, begin looking for the following ten specific things and write down your answers on the chapter summary form. The ten parts you study, these all begin with the letter C, are number one, caption. Give the chapter a very brief descriptive title. Try to find a key word of the chapter and fit it into your title. If your chapter is catchy or produces a mental picture, you're going to remember it longer. Secondly, the second C is contents. I describe, summarize, paraphrase, outline, or make a list of the major points in the chapter. Uh, don't try to interpret the chapter, just make observations on its contents. Record what you feel the writer is saying. Number three is chief people. List the most important people in the chapter. Ask yourself, who are the main people? Why are they included? What is significant about them? Uh, if the chapter contains pronouns, you might have to refer to the previous chapter to determine to whom the pronouns are referring. Write down your reasons for choosing certain people as the chief ones of the chapter. Number four is choice verse. Choose a verse that summarizes the entire chapter or one that speaks to you personally. Sometimes you're going to want to select a verse from which you'll be writing your application. Number five is crucial words. Write down the key word or words of the chapter. Often the key word will be the one most used in the chapter. Number six is challenges. List any difficulties you might have with the passage. Are there any statements you don't understand? Is there a problem or question you would like to study further? Often uh, you'll get ideas for other types of Bible study you may want to do in the future. Number seven is cross-references. Use the cross-references in your study Bible and look up other verses that help clarify what the chapter is talking about and list them on the form. Ask yourself, what else in the Bible helps me to understand this chapter? Number eight is Christ seen. The entire Bible is a revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus even used the Old Testament to teach his disciples about himself in Luke 24. As you read your chapter, watch for statements that will tell you about Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit, or God the Father. Are there any attributes of God evidence in the passage? Number nine are the central lessons. Write down the major principles, insights, and lessons you learn from the chapter. Ask yourself, why does God want this chapter in the Bible? What does he want to teach me from this chapter? And also, what is the central thought the writer is trying to develop? And then finally will be your conclusion. This is the application portion of your study and should always come last. Ask yourself, how do these truths apply to me personally? And then secondly, what specifically am I going to do about them? Okay, now your chapter summary form should look something like this. Just to use a full 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper on both sides. Uh, first of all, you have uh, your chapter, your caption. And then, of course, you have your contents and the chief people, uh, the choice verse, um, the um, uh, crucial words, and then, of course, your challenges down at the bottom of the first page. And then on that back side, you put down your cross-references, where Christ is seen. Uh, then you have your central lessons, and then you wrap it up with your conclusion down at the bottom. So that's basically what a, a chapter summary form looks like. And what I did is I went through Luke chapter 15, and I'll show you a completed form uh, that I did myself. Uh, first of all, you'll notice in the top of the page, 
then I put the chapter number right here, okay, uh, uh, chapter 15. You notice that uh, the caption that I put for it was lost and found. And then thirdly, uh, you have your contents. Now for the contents, I say this chapter contains three parables, uh, verses 3 to 7, you have the lost sheep, in verses 9 to 10, or 8 to 10, rather, you have the lost coin. In verses 11 to 32, you, hear, you read about the lost son. And then the chief people, of course, you have the shepherd with the lost sheep, the woman with the lost coin, uh, the father with the lost son. A choice verse I chose was verse 7, where it says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. And then for the crucial words, I saw lost and found were used several times in that chapter. The challenge is, was that part in verse 7 of chapter 15 where it says uh, 99 just persons which need no repentance. And I ask, well, what does that mean? And maybe for further study I can look that up. Uh, on the back side, I, for my cross-references, I used Luke 15 verses 4 to 6. I used uh, uh, the cross-references of Matthew 18. John chapter 10, 1 Peter chapter 2, Isaiah 53, and Psalm 119. And then for Christ's scene, in the first parable, you can see Jesus being the good shepherd, searching for the lost sheep. Uh, and then the second parable, you have the Holy Spirit, our rightful owner, finding and restoring the lost coin. And then the third parable, you find God the Father is waiting to welcome, welcome home the prodigal son. The central lessons that I came up with in this chapter were that uh, the son uh, went away saying, give me, and he returned saying, make me. Uh, then you find that God cares for sinners and eagerly awaits for them to return home. And then, of course, the characteristics of the older brother. There's anger. He was acting in a childish manner. He was jealous. He had wrong perspective in life. And also, he was a grumbler. And then for my conclusion, uh, the practical application, in each of the three parables, a concrete effort was made to recover what was lost. Uh, many of my friends are lost without Christ. I need to develop specific soul winning plans for reaching them with the gospel. I'm going to start by witnessing to my friend Jim this weekend, and I need to express more joy when I hear of people who have received Christ as their Savior. So that's basically how you do a chapter summary. It's very simple. It doesn't require any special tools, just your study Bible. And uh, probably takes maybe 20 minutes to do. Uh, just, just write whatever the Lord lays on your heart. And you'll find that over a period of time that the Bible will come alive. You'll remember things. You'll remember a certain uh, passages of the Bible uh, that are very dear to you. You know, I try this with the book of John. Just go through each chapter. And after a while, uh, after going through the entire uh, book of John, it will come alive to you. So I hope this uh, study has been good for you, uh, that uh, you've learned something from it. And uh, we'll see you next time, okay?